In the mid 70s, I took my first trip to California to find out what makes a good wine versus a great wine. Money. <laughs> good old fashioned hard cash. While in the Golden State, I took a tour stop at Napa Valley in the great Robert Mondavi Vineyard. It was a relatively new winery at the time. Mondavi, who was a pioneer in the wine industry, he had significant influence over the quality and innovation of viticulture in California. Now, one of the notable features of the winery is the archway that Mondavi built. So that when you entered the winery, the venture wanted to symbolize a gateway to a new experience of tasting Napa Valley wine. Before Mondavi and his cohorts, Napa was known just for growing grapes. My visit became the watermark for my affinity for wine and where I learned that wine improves with age. The older I get, the more I like it. <laughs> <laughs> On my second trip to the wine country, I was looking for a particular winemaker who made a very highly rated Pinot Noir. When I got to my destination, there were a couple of overweight gentlemen in a garage mixing wine in test tubes. I got out of the car, introduced myself, and asked if I was at the right location. And in unison, they both said, of course. I mumbled to myself, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> the mad scientist then started to explain the significance of growing Pinot Noir grapes. The winemaker who described or was explaining the significance of Pinot Noir's thin skins, the chair beneath him ironically broke. <laughs> he collapsed on the floor, firmly grasping that test tube full of wine in his hand, jokingly saying, it must have been the extra weight of the test tube that broke the chair. <laughs> Now, on a subsequent business trip to San Francisco, one of my salespeople joined me for the trek up to Napa. Lola was not married and looking for a man. <laughs> Prior to the trip, I did some research on the wineries that I wanted to visit. And one in particular, Foreman Vineyards, because of its high ratings of its wines. Unfortunately, it wasn't open to the public. Even still, when we're in the area, we drive by to see where it was located. The curtains to the bedroom were open and you could see right through. And Lola said, why don't we go knock on the door? <laughs> and I said, without an appointment? She said, yes, you always ask me to make cold calls. Isn't this like a cold call? <laughs> So we got out of the car, we walked down a steep walkway, up onto the porch, knocked on the door several times. Mr. Foreman eventually opens the door. And Lola faints. After she composed herself, she asked Mr. Foreman, can we tour your winery? And he said, only if you faint will you drink my wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 2001. And I'm in between jobs. I write a letter to Mr. Mondavi describing the experience that I had in the mid 70s and how it influenced my desire to want to become a winemaker, learn to be a farmer, and maybe buy property in Napa. He sent me a personal letter stating that he was going to be in New York at the same time that I was going to be in Napa, but he wanted me to meet with his chief of operations. I accepted. 
I was hosted to a beautiful lunch in front of two Cologne, Mondavi's number one rated vineyard. And in front of us, there were rows and rows of vines as far as the eye could see. After a little small talk, I asked the COO how much I would have to invest. It was a lot more than what I had. <laughs> and it gave me a great pause. When I met my wife, I told her that I wanted to become a farmer and a winemaker and own property in Napa. So I took her to the wine country and as we're driving through, she looks at all these vineyards and the look on her face said a thousand words. She said, you know, I love your idea of becoming a winemaker, but it looks like a lot of work. <laughs> and you know, I just raised three children, three boys, and I've been on a racetrack for the last 20 years. And I need a breather. Can we talk about this in the near future? In closing, I began learning about how to be a winemaker from a couple of overweight guys in a garage mixing wine in test tubes. That some women get carried away when they see an attractive man. And that compromising with the one you care about can lead to really good decisions and save mucho headache. <laughs> I know this. That penicillin cures, but wine makes people happy. <laughs> Mr. Tokes.